God's word, faithfully preached, is his comprehensive equipment for changing lives, delivering them from the shackles of sin, the flesh, and the world, and transforming them into useful vessels through whom Jesus can pour out his blessing. Living Seed invites you to a feast of the truth as God's servant brings to us the word of life. Let's take it from verse 13. Verse 13, and I'll read it up to verse 17. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men. Because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong. And, if, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Not not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the law of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. May God bless the word of God to our hearts even as we study it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What it is that a young man must do in order not to jeopardize his destiny? When should a young man conquer so that he will not end a captive? When should a young man be victorious so that he will not end in life as a victim? When must a young person overcome so that in the future he will not it will not become a casualty in life. That's the issue that I want us to think together about. Now that you are young, you must overcome. That's what I want you to look at. Now that you are young, what does that say? You must do what? Overcome. I'll give you a very quick, a very quick analysis of what makes it critical for you to overcome now and not to wait until another 10 years before you gain the truth. Because in 10 years' time, you will have become a victim, not a victor. In 10 years' time, if you do not overcome now, you will have become a captain and not a captain. 
Well, you are not getting it. Are you getting me? If you do not overcome now, in 10 years' time, you will be a victim rather than a victor. If you do not overcome now, now that you are young, in 10 years' time, you will be a captive rather than what? A captain. If you do not overcome now, if you do not overcome now, in 10 years, rather than be a winner, you will be a loser or a casualty. So, the criticality of overcoming while you are young is what I want to deal with. Nobody did not lose when he was old. Reuben was overcome when he was young. So he became a victim at old age. Reuben did not overcome when he was young. So he became a captain rather than being a captain. He was born to be a captain. He was the first born of his father. He was the first born. In fact, Jacob said, he was the beginning of my strength, the excellency of Jacob. Unfortunately, he who had the excellency of Jacob did not excel. Because he was overcome when he was young. So my first cry this morning, and I'm hoping I could make it short so that we can pray together, is that overcoming is critical now that you are young. If you plan to be a victor, you must overcome now. If you do not intend to be a victim, a victim of circumstances, a victim of your old behavior, a victim of the trap the devil set for men, this is the time to overcome. If you don't overcome now, you are already planning to be a casualty. If you don't overcome now, you are already planning to be a loser when you should have been a winner. So the passage we read is a very curious passage. Every time I read it, I keep asking, Lord, why do you talk to young men like this? And that will help me to quickly set something, you know, in order for you. Now, you will notice that First John chapter 2 said, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. When the Bible said, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him from the beginning. In my mind, I was saying, what does that mean? And the only thing that came to my mind was history. History. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him from the beginning. That doesn't tell us who they are as of today. That doesn't tell us where they stand as of today. The only thing that I noted 
was that it was a reference unto history. You have known him from the beginning. And so I want to inform you. Fathers, sincerely speaking, many times they have nothing to look forward to. They can only look to what they have known from the beginning. When you come to that segment of life, you can only look back. There's nothing really to look forward to anymore because opportunities are almost finished. When you see old mothers, how many of you have visited your grandmother of, of, of listen? Let me see your hand. How many of you visited your grandmother? Thank you. Raise your hand. Let me see. Now, can you tell me what normally dominates the discussion with your grandmother? Huh? They will be talking of old experience and they will be counseling you and say, look, in our own days, we didn't know things would be like this. Be careful. Huh? And if your grandmother is not talking about that, she's talking about how she will die and how she will be buried. Have you noticed that? Whenever you go to them, that's their discussion. Are we together? Some of them they will call you and say, Look, when are you going to marry and bring me your son so that I can carry your child before I die? Am I correct? No, they are like that. They are finished. Their opportunities are finished. I want to also tell you something about that. You will notice that. When he said, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him from the beginning, he didn't say much about the devil fighting them. Have you noticed that God said anything about the devil fighting them? Eh? Please check. Who did the Bible say has overcome the wicked one? Eh? Is the young man, is the young lady. Can I tell you why? It's not because the devil does not fight old people. It's because whatever the devil wanted to collect from old people, I get it. If he has not already collected this while they were young, it's almost too late for him. Eh? If the devil comes to this meeting now, are you hearing me? And he sees some old people, and he sees some young people, who do you think the devil will run after? Eh? Why can you not run after the old? Why can you not run after the old? The devil is just saying, even if I conquer this old man, what will he do for me? <laughs> or what benefit is he for me? What am I going to collect from him? Can I collect his history? Can I collect his old clothes? Leave him. He has finished. Do you know that there were some men when they were young? They were great flirts. They ran after women. Any girl that passed by them, they would run after. But after they have grown old, Girls may even be passing in front of them. What does the man say? I am not interested in that. He is finished. So Satan no longer fights him like he used to fight him. That does not mean that if the devil can get him and send him to hell, he will not take him off. He will. But for the devil, he also has priority. What I say has? Priority. And the priority of the devil's battle is for the young. I'll tell you why. I'll 
tell you the reason why. And I tell you the very critical area of battle in which you must overcome. If you don't overcome now, you only want to be a victim. He said, I write unto you. That's the next thing I want you to mark before I come and set you on the young man. He said, I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. Again, I'm noting that when you are little children, when you are toddlers, you don't have much battle. Please hear me very well. As a toddler, as a little child, all you needed to be saved is to follow your mother and follow your father anywhere he's going. If that is, sit down there and you sat there, no problem. If anything was coming to attack you as a, a little child, who stood up to fight? Who stood up to fight, please? Your parents. You say, no, 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 don't get that girl, don't get that girl. As a toddler, between age zero up to age 11 or possibly age 12, Everything about that child is totally dependent on the family, on the parents. Do you know that as a toddler, even if you have friends who are also of your age mates, do you know that you could not go on your own to visit your friends unless dad and mom did what to you that? Am I correct? So when you're on the road, everybody is watching over you. Everybody is taking care of you. And for a little child, all he needs is just to follow parents and just to be with them, and that will be all. It is not that the devil does not fight little children, are you there me? But when he's fighting little children, I want to tell you, the, the contest he has, it's with the parents. It's with the parents. Sometimes when a little child is, is going through a difficult time, if the parents that will stand up and they will be praying or they will be running up and down, they are the one who will be looking for doctors and everything. Little children, wonderful. If we were going to be very little toddlers that Dad and mom is moving up and down with crawling up and down. No problem. You will have been all right. And all the time when you were little children, listen, whatever dad tells you, you believe it. Whatever mommy says, you believe it. When they brought you a dress, they said, This dress is good. You say, It's good. Because you are a baby. Even though the devil, if he had opportunity, would like to kill children before they become anything. But I want to tell you, the battle over children is not as fierce simply because there are people, elders, parents, who are standing, you know, to take the bullets and to shield the child away. So the child may never know the problem. May never know what is going on. They never know the challenges. And you will notice that for Reuben, while he was a young baby, Leah took care of her. For Dana, for all the years, her mother kept her inside. I said, Daniel, yeah, don't go out. The girl started. When it is 6 p.m., Daniel, Daniel, come, 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 come. She sat there. But 
When does the battle become fierce? When you step out of childhood? When you are now from what I call the teenage until your mid twenties? If you want me to put it together, the greatest party time is usually between I wanted to say between 15 and 25. Even though some of you, the devil started chasing you when you were 13. But the teenage, up to age 25, and I've chosen 25 very technically because I want to inform you, by 26, if you have already lost your battle, you are likely to be a victim. Unless God quickly intervened and you open up to God quickly and say, Lord, help me. By the time a child has moved and is already on the 26, 27, 28 in Whatever was not achieved earlier is almost difficult and impossible. Are you hearing me? So when God was going to speak to the young person, the young people, and don't mind when he said, I write unto you, young man, he was using the word man in the generic sense. He's not talking about male. He's talking about young persons, young lady and young men. Is that okay? Is that all right? Okay. He said, when you came to writing the young man, see how you put it, and I just wish I could quickly I like it and then I go with you. He said, I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. Then in verse 14 he says, I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. The battle that comes on a young man, I want to give you five quick reasons. Why the devil, why the wicked one, emphasizes and concentrates his greatest effort at the young man. The first issue is that at that age, between 15 and 25, that critical age is the age of foundation. What do I call it? That's the age of foundation. I'll tell you now. You see, the foundation for your career, whether you are going to be a doctor, whether you are going to be an engineer, whether you are going to be a professor, whether you are going to be whatever you are going to be, the foundation for career is not actually made when you are 30. When you are 30 and you are me, if you do not already understand mathematics at 30, can you get mathematics again? Really? So, if during your matric, mathematics disqualified you from being an engineer, what age do you do matric? Eh? 18. 18. And you will notice that your text 
either to do mathematics and be strong in mathematics or not, you need it when you are around 14. Those of you that eventually hated math today, can you remind me when you started hating math? Talk to me. When? When? When that teacher, I don't like math, I don't like math, they don't like it. They don't like it. It's too difficult. You did it when you were just about getting into uh, the junior secondary school three. I don't know what how to call it here. You know, when you do do you do your primary school grade eight, have you? Now, at grade eight, that's when you start the, what we call the junior secondary idea. Now, by the time you made a decision, unconsciously to you, I don't like math. And so, because at foundation, you omitted something, nothing can change it when you are 26. Nothing can change it when you are 30. So when the devil is looking for how can I cripple this man for life, career wise, when does he put up the battle at his foundation? The Bible said, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The battle is, is strong for the young because the youthful years, they are the foundational years. They are the years when whatever you are likely to become, you lay the foundation of it. Praise the Lord. Hey, are we together? Foundation. So because the youthful years are the years of foundation, the devil wanting to make a lasting impact concentrates on that time of foundation. Of foundation. I just use the foundation for career. Can I talk to you about foundation for your love life? Eh? Do you know that between age 0 and 12, listen, whether you're a young man or you're a young lady, between age 0 and 12, honestly speaking, you are not bothered about who looks at you. You are not bothered about what somebody says about you. When you dress up, listen to me, the only person that you are concerned about in looking at how you dress is your mother. I say, girl, when you finish dressing, you can say, Mommy! That's what concerns you at that age. As a young man, are you hearing me? At that age, you have to be running after him. You did not come your end. You did not come your end. Because to me, you just don't care. You may never even iron his trouser. It is mommy and dad that will be ironing for you. I say, look, you didn't look nice. But can I inform you? When you became 15, did anybody tell you as a young lady how to make your bed? Answer me, please. Eh? Talk to me and I want to. Let's talk together. No. No. How many times do you take your bath a day? When she became 15. Eh? At least. Two times. At least. 
I use at least because, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> when you finish cooking, you keep back in the menu, but when you just cooked, finish, because it sweats, something says, how can you go now? You'll be smelling bad, you'll be smelling bad. So what did you do? You quickly take a quick bath, then you dress up, and you got some good perfume, and you came out. This time, you are not going before your mother and say, Mom, did you? No, no, no. You went before the mirror. Because you have entered the age of self consciousness, you have entered the age of impression. I said that age was the age of foundation, is also the age of impression. That's the age when you seek to impress and when you are easily impressed. This is the age in which you dress the match. If you are wearing pink, pink blouse, you look for what matches it. You look for the skirt that matches it and the air tie that comes in and the handbag and the belt. And your shoe must be part of it. Why are you doing all that? Because you are conscious that somebody somewhere is looking at you. Now, it is at that age that nobody Listen to me now. I want you all to be here. Are you hearing me? At that age, now at this age where you are, do you appreciate if your mother just went to the supermarket and bought one cloth for you? Do you appreciate it? No. What do you tell mom? What do you tell her? Say, so if you want to give me money, give me money. I know what I need. I go to buy things for myself. That age, you don't want anybody to buy anything for you. You want to be the one who decides what you wanted and what you don't want. Am I correct? So, that age is the age of self-definition. You want to be the one who defines yourself by yourself. In fact, if I tell you the truth, you will understand that whatever you believe from age 0 to age 12, once you enter into the teenage, something in you is squaring it. Who is it? Why? Then, you are not going to church! You are not going to church! You look more, stop shouting. If I want to go to church, I know when to go to church. Go to church every morning. The food means that I'm not a Christian if I don't go to church every day. Uh -uh. You know, it is at that time that there's a tension between parents and their daughters and their sons. You know the quarrel. You say, You are becoming rebellious. You are becoming rebellious. Say, No, excuse me, mom. It's not a question of rebellion. And please, talk to me as somebody. <laughs> Don't you understand you are shouting at me? If you want me to do something, tell me. And then give me time to think about it. <laughs> Am I discussing properly? Eh? Uh -huh. That's the normal age. It's the age of self definition and personal choice. That's why at this age, you have to choose even if you want to follow the Lord by yourself. That's what normally affects many parents. Parents say, I brought this child up, I took him to church every day, they were with me every time. In fact, when he was five, he was in the choir, he the one that used to live by with us, but now he's not in church again. It's not so. 
The truth is that that child is no more a child. He has come to the age of personal definition, personal choice. And he's saying, I don't want to do anything because they told me to do it. I want to do things because I want to do it. Am I communicating with you? Now, that age, to me, is not wrong. It's good. But that's where the battle is. Because that is the point of choice. And because you have to make choice, that time you make choice of friends. You will discover that at the time, your parents' friends, they are not necessarily your friend. Am I right? Eh? Oh. How many of you feel nice when you go with your parents and they also say, <laughs> that's, our, that's our baby, that's our baby. You feel good about that. So next time when they are going, I say, Mom, go, go, I'm not ready, I'm not going with you. So I know that's great today. I say, no, no, we're going. I come with my friends. What? Which friend? This is our friend now. No, 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 that's your friend. It's not my friend. That's the age when you choose your friends. And many, many times, your friends may not be your father's friend. They may not be your mother's friend. And so the tension a young man is having is, when will I have my own friendship? When will I bring them home? And for some of us, because your parents are very strict, they don't want you to bring your friends home. So what did you do? You arrange joints. Yes, you and your friends can be together. And when mama is calling, you say, old, 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 old mom is, is, is beginning to shout now <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> They are looking for me now. I just don't um, know. So, like, not. so sometimes the phone is ringing, ringing, you know. It's, it's, I know what she will say. So you just ignore it. But when it is the phone that rang from that other guy, you say, Where are you now? Where are you now? Sometimes you could tap. For 24 hours on your on your Twitter or Facebook, you know all those things, and then you are talking. There's something in your ear per second per second because you have come to that age of choice. Because it's the age of foundation. The age of self definition, the age of impression, the age of choice. It becomes a very, very critical point that the devil also said, now that she's about laying foundation, can I do something about it? Now that she's seeking definition for herself or for himself, can I give him a wrong definition for what life is? Now that he's looking for impression, can I give him something that would be an impression, permanent impression on his heart or on her heart that for many years it will be difficult to rub off? And now that she's going to make a choice that will finally affect everything about her, that's the time she will choose friends, that's the time she will choose whoever she's likely to marry. And may I tell you that I don't think it is strange that at this age, the biggest challenge you are facing is your choice. Even as we came for this meeting, don't think I don't know. I know that some people came for this meeting to let me go there in case I will find me there. <laughs> 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 I know it. 
we, we have been there before now, you know, we know it. So we know. And sometimes, you know, that guy said, give me your number, give me your number. And as soon as you give him your number, 6 a.m. tomorrow, just thinking about you. So it's a great privilege meeting you at the uh, work at the Sulu University the other day. You made my day. <laughs> Signed, someone who cares. <laughs> Are we together? <laughs> That's the point. That's the age. I want to tell you when you get to 32, 33, it reduces. Nobody can easily just bounce on you and be. No. Because that point has passed. But at this point, you get all manner of anonymous texts who will just keep you in suspense. He may send you a series of texts four or five times without telling you exactly the name. You are curious. You are curious. And then you may want to phone back and say, excuse me, um, I got this text. May I know you if there were... You <laughs> just want to come. The age. The last thing that is peculiar about this age that makes it a battlefield where you have to be strong is that this is what I call the determinant age. What do I call it? It's the determinant age. Why is it determinant? Whatever you do now determines 90% of what you can become in the next many, many years of your life. Have you agreed to that point? Do you follow me to this point? So, what is the reason why the devil wants to fight the young man. And the Bible says, I will write unto you, young man, because you are you have overcome the wicked one. If during this period if God does not step into your life and give you victory, every defeat you suffer at this age does not only have a damage for this period, it has a cumulative damage for many years ahead of you. I just gave you an illustration of career. If you meet friends of yours that have ended as ordinary typists, we are not and not downgrading a typist, but all he could become is a clerical staff, junior staff. If you go to trace what made him like that, you will notice that the problem started at this age. It may be at that time that he was a dropout in school. It may be at that time that he became pregnant and could not finish matric. And as she dropped out, she couldn't continue a regular school, so she went to this evening school where they are doing commercial typing. 
I should get a quick, uh, a quick uh, certificate. I should get a job, and they are giving a little, little pictures. I should bought a, trans, uh, a little radio, and she's enjoying herself, finished. Don't go anywhere again. If you look at those who did not marry and their marriage did not work well, if you go to check, this was a point at which the devil attacked them with a wrong choice. Wrong choice. And because they have done it, there's nowhere else to go. So the Bible says, I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. And I want to say to you, if you will overcome at all, when are you to overcome? Please talk to me. When are you to overcome? Now. The reason is this. If you do not overcome, some habits that the devil is introducing to you at this point. May I tell you? Because after this age, in fact, you know, in between this age and the next segment, there's a little supervision. I mean, some people may say, uh, Rose, where, are you? Where, where, where did you go yesterday? And you may find reason to tell stories of how, and you know, and I didn't get a boss on time, even though that's not what happened. But after you have passed that age, let me say, when you are beyond 25, when you are 26, one of the things you don't get anymore is anybody supervising you. Are you understanding? Nobody is likely to ask you, where did you go yesterday? Nobody is likely to ask you, when did you wake up? So, even if you have become addicted onto moving, you see, when you are still sleeping in your father's house, and they, they see that even at 2 a.m. you have not slept, your dad may like this, huh? What are you doing? You didn't sleep. Are you reading in the middle of the night? You say, oh, you know, I have an assignment. There's no assignment to But when you get to 25, 26, sincerely speaking, if you decide to keep a night vigil from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. watching movie, nobody is there to ask, why didn't you sleep? You are finished. So the devil knows that the time to conquer this boy is now. Once we conquer him now, we cripple him for life. Once we conquer him now, we set him as a captive. He will always be a captive under our hand for many, many years. Permit me to quickly check what are the battle, battle issues that every young man battles with. When I finish this by the grace of God later on, I will then deal with one of the critical issues that God must help you to overcome. Now, so in verse 15, verse 16, and verse 17, the Bible noted what are the areas that is particularly the battleground for the young man. Look at it. He said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, what is in the world? The lust of the flesh. I don't know whether somebody has a living Bible. Is anybody carrying a living Bible here? Can you read for me? 
You mean Bible? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. All these wonderful things. Uh huh. Wait. What is the first issue that the world system is running after and is presenting to you? What is it? Grace for sex. I want to be playing with you. That's why. Because it's a battle. It's a battle. Do you know as a young lady, let me tell you the truth today, if God gives you victory and you are not a victim for sex or sexual perversion, like masturbation, like lesbianism, eh? if God gives you victory now and you did not fall into it as a victim, do you know that at 40, the devil has lost you. The devil say, I cannot get this woman again because she's gone out of my hand. But between 16, when you are sweet 16, and 25, the craze for sex for a young man, for a young lady, very high. Are you getting me? Very hard. The first thing is that as you are coming out in your beauty as a young lady, the first thing young men are looking at in you now, they look at your face, they look at your breast, they look at your box. That's what they are concerned about. When they see you coming, they will be looking at you like this, looking at you like this, looking at you like this. That's what they are looking for. Praise for sex. If they invited you and they just held your hand, for you to know that they are not just holding your hand as they used to hold your hand as a toddler. If they put their hand in your hand, there's a communication. Sometimes you'll be using a finger to scratch you somewhere. Is communicating with you and your head is turning. Say, hmm. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Your greatest challenge, which is a battlefield for the young girl, is great for us for sex. And for young man, that is the time. When the only thing that you are attracted with, for example, when they introduce you to biology and they came to the issue of human, uh, human reproduction, do you know that even though it's a biology topic, what does it do to you unconsciously? You find yourself looking for nude pictures. And today now, Unlike in our own day. You know, in our own day, there was no internet. There was no cell phone. So when we wanted to look at such things, there were some special magazines that some people that had money, they would buy it. And I remember in our class, some young boys would bring it. And then you see other boys. Because we are only boys only. You know, sometimes we think that if you run a school that is boys only and girls only, that there will be no problem of immorality. My lie. My lie. It's not true. The boys! Okay. So we are looking at the page. And then there are these experts that will be giving us direction and say this. And before you know it, you get hooked on pornography. But for your own generation, 
You don't need to buy a magazine. Can you imagine the amount of pornography that is being posted and solicited into your box? Can you imagine that if you don't take time, even your phone alone, somebody will just post a picture, a new picture of herself, and you are saying, I guess you will like this. And of course, in our days, when we wanted to misbehave as young men, we said, Where's the cinema? Where's the cinema? We took time to go for cinema and we would pay maybe a little ticket to enter. And you know the cinema hall used to be very dark. Then you go in. Even when you are sitting in the cinema, tell you this. You will not know the case for sex that goes on among young people. But today, your own age is different. You don't go to cinema now because there's no need to cinema. You can watch every cinema on your iPhone. Am I right? And you have the remote where you can scroll from one side to another side, from another side to another side, from one television station to another station. Crystal clear. You get addicted. Where is Satan doing that? He knows that if he can destroy your sexual life now that you are young, it will leave you a permanent damage. Even when you will have been older, you will be a victim. You will be a victim. Grace for sex. The desire, you know, sometimes this grace is so strong that you are just looking for somebody just to hold you. Just hold me. If you love me, if you love me, how will you show that you love me? Yeah. How can you say you love me and you are not holding me? And he holds you. And communication goes. And before you know it, you are gone. Grace. For what? For sex. It's a battle. Listen, when I say the battle for the young, I don't mean that there are no old people that are also in that addiction. But I want to tell you, if you see an old man chasing a girl of your age, can I tell you, he did not start today. When did he begin? When he was young. That was what he was conquered and he became a victim of. Sometimes I've met old people that are running after girls that are of their daughter's age. One man, he was my colleague, we were lecturers together. And look at our student, he's a student, a girl that is just entering college. And my colleague, the senior, senior lecturer, was running after that girl. And so, one night, there was a quarrel, and the girl said, I will disgrace you here today. If you don't respect yourself, I will deal with you. I came out, I said, you don't care what are you doing with senior lecturer? Then you don't mind me. You are the one calling senior lecturer. It's not senior anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at her. What's the problem? So I called my colleague and said, sir, what, 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 what do you think this is in the way, you know, you know, you know, I feel, I feel cold, so I said, ah, at this age, when did you learn it? When he was young. Some of you don't know. We talk about David. You know David? King David. Eh? That great king. Why did he fall to Bathsheba? You don't know that it was a challenge in his life when he was younger. He 
It was a big challenge. Do you know that when he was to go and fight Goliath, there was a, a price tag. What was the price tag? Anybody that can kill this man, the king will give him what? His daughter. It looks little, but that thing hooked with a David. So when he conquered Goliath, he was looking for what? The price, the king's daughter. Somehow, 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 he didn't give him that chance. I thought that if the father of a girl you want to marry is any achieve with gathering, what should you do? You should stop looking to that family for marriage. Am I right? But David still fell in love with another girl in that house. And in that house, they gave him the girl. They said, this is the way we are going to capture David. Unfortunately, they were looking for to deal with him when he escaped. As he escaped into the cave, there was a woman, you remember, the daughter of Ahinoam, as I thought that was a legitimate wife. And then you remember Nabal, Nabal, the man that was sharing, that was uh, doing harvest. And David said, give me food. And the man said, no way. Do you remember? As soon as the man died, the first message, condolence visit to the woman, to the wife. You know, David sent his servant, he said, go and tell Abigail, I shall come and be my wife. Are you a relative of Nava? No. Are you the one to hear the wife of the dead? I don't know why. And he just took the woman. When you read your Bible very well, as soon as David came and he was established as the king, that was a, when David knew that he has now been established as the king, what did he do? He married many more wives. What's the problem? That was something he did not overcome. When? When? When he was young. When he came into the problem of that say that Uriah's wife, if I tell you who Uriah's wife was, you'll be surprised. Uriah was the grandson of Ahitophel, who is the friend of David. You're not understanding. David was chasing the wife of the grandson of his friend. Did you understand what I'm talking about? Can you imagine your grandfather? Eh? The grandfather of your husband chasing you to sleep with you. You see? Is he mad? Is he mad? <laughs> this makes me mad. Once you are addicted, you don't even know what not to do. He was addicted. That's the problem. And by the time Absalom was chasing his father out, the Bible reported to us there are so many concubines that David was having addiction. When he was old, now very old, are you hearing me? His wife, the one that he collected from Uriah, that river was still alive, which has not died. But we were told that the man was feeling cold. And that they used all kinds of blankets, like I see you find blankets here. You never feel warm. Until somebody there. The blanket that Brother David needed is not this kind of blanket. Too. <laughs> what was the blanket he needed? He needed a young girl. So they went and got a young girl to come and stay with this big man. What was the girl doing to keep him warm? That that could not do. 
addiction. Once you are addicted as a young man, you become a victim in your old age. Let me ask you, when will you overcome sexual craze? When? Now. If you don't overcome it now, it will make you a casualty. Your marriage will be a problem. You are likely to marry somebody that you really don't want to marry. You are likely to have a child that you do not plan to have. You are likely to damage. Damage your womb when you are not supposed to. Some of you that think that's not okay for me, I'm not going to do actual sex. But you want to enjoy everything about sexual craze. You know what it will do? It will affect your emotion. It will affect your concentration. One of the problems I want to say to you is that, you see, once you give in to crave for sex, it does two things to you. Let me tell you. What does it do? It takes a junk. It takes a junk of your thoughts. And because your thoughts is what you also need to develop your intelligence, your IQ could be greatly developed, but you need a sound mind. Are you getting me? Now, when every time, let's imagine that you are reading, you are reading, you are reading, suddenly your mind strays the way to Charlie, and then you carry your phone. You just want to see his face. You look at one of the photographs you put there. Charlie. Charlie. Mm. Poor guy. You know the problem? When you left your book, that level of concentration, you cannot be that great guy again. And from there you say, let me just call him. As you call, you may chat away for another one hour. You cannot return to your book anymore. It says, class students, you find yourself in the neighborhood of second class lower. If you don't take time, you may end up with let my people go degree. I can take you nowhere. Praise for sex consumes your heart deep. What did I say, boss? It consumes your heart deep. It takes a junk of space from your thoughtfulness, from your thought capacity. And before you know it, you only end as a mediocre. Let me tell you, every time you fall in love, it takes something from you that you cannot replace. It takes your affection. So, man, let me ask you, are you here? Are you, are you talking practically? How many of you have changed your form in the last six months? Be honest to me. You've changed your phone in the last six months. With your hand. I just want your hand. Good. Why did you change it? Was the former phone not good? There's a new phone that came out. Let's talk. You're not talking. You don't want us to be practical, are you? I thought we were here to do something good. You then discover that's the second challenge of the young man. The desire to buy everything that appeals to you. It's a battlefield. And because there's that desire and the devil knows that it appears to the young man. It creates for you an insatiable appetite. 
Many young men are in problem today because their appetite is bigger than their income. Some have collected loan, bursary, university bursary, that's supposed to set your school fees and your project fees and other things that will have kept you comfortable in school. But as soon as you got the bursary, you just sell one special iPhone or you sell a particular kind of outfit. You think, no, I need to get it. I need to get it. I just need that thing. I need it. I need it. That's how you die. That is your best way. Today you are not able to write your project. You are again looking for another loan. So by the time you graduate, listen to me now, there is a heavy debt on your neck. So that as you are collecting salary, you are only paying loan. Huh. How can you go like that? You are getting crippled. But if it is just that you buy something and it does not addict you, I will not have worried. But what the devil does at this age is that once it begins to affect your appetite, you can never be free from it again. You just find that you are always wanting to buy something. You are always wanting to change something. You are always wanting to keep the fashion. Now, it's a battle for the young. It is not that the devil has led the old people away from this. But let me tell you, if you see any woman or any man who is always buying gadgets and getting stuff with materials, with activities, and always having a very, very, very big budget for groceries and for things, when did she fall into that problem? When? It's when they were young. When you marry such a girl, you are in trouble. Your salary cannot sustain her. As you are bringing money, they bring more. When she went to market, she will see something say, well, when I saw it, I like it. I thought uh, uh, the color is actually better than the one we have in the house. The other one say, ah, ah, what are we doing with colors? They, that, that's you. You are, you are old fashioned. You are old fashioned. You don't have eye for color. The problem is that she was already overcome as she was young. So she cannot deliberately at this point set herself free. The desire to buy everything that appeals to your eyes. That's why when you come on campus, you see all kind of dress that young people wear. Except now that it's very cold in winter, that everybody do that. Come during the when 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 the weather is hot, how do they go? Some are almost naked. In the name of fashion. Some will buy a good clothes, but because it's too long. They will bring the scissors and cut it. Just because they want to. So when anything falls down, they want to pick it. Oh my God. <laughs> Why are they struggling like that? Who put them under that bondage? Something else has put them in trouble. And for many, many years to come, they are struggling with it. Can you imagine that some of you, the day you become pregnant, feeling like this, all the clothes you have as a single lady is cancelled because you can't wear it anywhere again. Can you imagine? The battle for the young man is very accentuated in these three directions. That's why I'm dealing with it. Now, when they are talking to pastors, somebody was talking to pastors, I think two weeks ago where I was, 
we were having a meeting in Ghana and he said, there are three things that every pastor must watch. I was waiting for him to mention them. He said, you must watch temptation for sex. You must watch the problem of money and the problem of pride. And I looked at what they said they are warning pastor about. And I said, hey, those are the same issues that the devil fights in with ever before he became a pastor. It is not because he becomes a pastor that sex becomes a problem to him. It has been there. Now that he becomes a pastor, you know what makes it more difficult? It's because now as a man of God, even girls, women that will have been careful not come near you, because now that you're a man of God, a believer, you are innocent. So the, the, the ladies who come and say, hey, Pastor, just pray for me, just pray for me. They will willingly need that. And the man of God will put his hand and be rubbing their back. In the name of many hands, that man is a victim. Since when has he been conquered? Talk to me, please. When he was young. I want to ask you as you talk to God. Reuben could not become anything because when he was young, he started dabbling into sexual life. You know, Reuben, before he began now to graduate to sleep with his father's wife, one of the reasons why they used to beat Joseph was that whenever they went out, Joseph normally came and said, Daddy, the way my brothers are dealing with girls, there was just a woman that was passing, they just caught her like this. And they slept with her. Five of them slept with that girl. And when the boy comes to report, and their father says, Why are you behaving like this? He said, Okay. When they go in the field tomorrow, because they go here, go here. Huh? They are the radio, you are the radio South Africa. Have you? They are always carrying this back home. Okay. We'll do it now. They hit the boy on his head. Bah! Bah! We will do it again. Go and tell your dad. You see, he doesn't know that those things will graduate. When there are no more girls on the street, what did he now do? He landed on his father's wife. It's an addiction. May God not allow you to be a victim. Because once the devil conquers a man as you, oh God, it will take the anointing of the Holy Spirit to break that yoke. And that's what we are going to do this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. What is the next time before we stop? The pride that comes from a sense of importance. The arrogance that comes to a young man when he thinks it's okay. Some of you, you are arrogant because you are beautiful. But some young girls, they are very beautiful and they, they are so conscious of their beauty and their beauty comes. So, They particularly look for a very high issue. So they're squeezing their eyes. You can see pride. And the only thing she's proud about is that I'm beautiful. If I go anywhere, at least five boys will run after me. Be careful. If five boys run after you per day, you are likely to fall into a wrong hand, oh. humble yourself. The Bible said, beauty is vain. Only the woman that fears the Lord should be praised. Praise the Lord. Young men that are arrogant. Some are arrogant because the arrogance of the family where they come from. Some are proud simply because they think that uh, uh, because of their performance in school, when they are passing, many girls are, are calling them. Be careful. 
ดิ้งอุนเนรอนอาตาอาตาเอ็กลาวอินอราคิสโอคิดะ When the circuit finished, they would drop you. Be careful. Now I stop on this, so that we can pray together. And what is it? I told you that when Dina or Dina was very young, she was in the house. Her mother said, "Don't go out." She obeyed. As soon as she became a teenager, everybody around did not keep me home. Am I? I want to go out. Mom said, "Where are you going?" I just want to go. You can't keep me here because I'm not just. I want to belong. So she must have dressed one day like that, and uh, trying to belong to the daughters of Moab. She must have dressed in a particular manner. As soon as she came out. The Bible says the prince of the land, the principality of Moab, saw her and ran after her. And the first attempt, no proposal for marriage, disbarred her. And her brother said she never married. Honestly, that girl never married. Her own destiny was finished. Nothing could be said about her, but this happened to her, not as a toddler. It was in this age. We don't miss it in this age. When our brother pointed about Judah, who repented, one of the things that taught me about Judah was the fact that even this situation that he went and fell into. It was. He had already grown a bit. He had sons. He was supposed to be a father. He should have been a grandfather, even though because that the, his children were dying. Unfortunately, but when God confronted him, because that had not been something he had been falling into before, it was easy. If a young man had been falling into a particular way of life, by the time he's now old, it's difficult. So this morning, I have written to you, young man, because you have overcome the wicked one. How did you overcome the wicked one? You are strong. I realize that it takes strength now. Overcome, praise the Lord. You have to be strong to say no to everything the devil is bringing around you. You have to be strong, and the word of the Lord must be in your heart. Otherwise, the barrage of temptation that is facing you, apart from you yourself, look at your colleagues who look at you. You know, sometimes you are talking with young girls. Teenagers, or in their early twenties, you know their discussion. You know their discussion. Sometimes, even though you are different, you're a Christian girl. You have been wanting to follow the Lord. As soon as you go to the university, one of the young girls come around and say, "How are you? Are you a complete woman? Are you a complete woman?" You say, "What do you mean by that? I'm complete girl. You." Have you experienced the height? You say which height? So that's why we are saying you are still ignorant. Then she walks away. They come and say an ignorant girl. So they make ridicule of you, ridicule of you, so that you are beginning to say, "Is anything wrong with me? Am I not complete? Why am I like this? Why am I no?" And what experience is not true? You have just been tempted. I'm trusting God that you will keep yourself in sanctity. You will not allow anybody to spoil your body when you are not yet ready to marry. 
the temptations around you so much. You've got to be strong. The Bible says, I write to you because you are strong. And the word of the Lord is where? Is in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. We stop and do stupid. You must be a victor. Tell somebody, I want to be a victor, not a victim. I will be a captain, not a captain. I will be a winner and not a loser. I'm not going to be a casualty in my lifetime. I'm not going to be crippled. I'm too young to be crippled. God is going to make you what he wants you to be. When must you win your battle? Now. We're going to pray. There are things that have happened in your past that the devil is saying, keep it, don't tell anybody. You know why? He wants you to keep the junk so that your future can be corroded. Expose him today. Say, devil, you are not my friend. You don't have any good plan for me. And I'm not going to cover you up. I'm going to the Lord. Who is able to deliver me? It's possible that, like Reuben, you got involved in some things. But you have to say, Don't tell anybody! Not knowing that it is waiting for you at the point of your destiny. Let's puncture it today. That God may have mercy. That the Holy Spirit might give you victory. So that now, as you overcome, you'll be a victor. In the coming days, don't be captured by the things the devil is introducing today, so that you can become a captain, a captain in life, a captain in your career, a captain in your community, and a captain even in Christian life. God can make you a captain. I want us to cry to God together. I will give a short opportunity. That if you say to get today, Lord, I'm beginning to see the need for you to give me victory. In this area, in this area, in this area, in this area, you may find that you have started telling lies because you are struggling to cover something. Bring it before God. I say, Lord, a captain I want to be, not a captain. A victor I want to be. Not a victim. A winner, oh Lord, I want to be. Not a loser. Not a loser. Not to be a casualty on my journey. Lord Jesus, make me a trophy. A trophy of your glory. That in the coming days, oh, I will stand tall. And the devil will be put to shame. When it looks at me, let's stand as we call on God together. Let's pray. Thank you this morning, Father. Thank you for the opportunity that we see you bringing to us in order to be what you say we should be. Please, Lord, help us. Let's pray. Open your own mouth and talk to God. Lord, I want to be a captain, not a captain. I must be a victor, not a victim. The battle is very, very fierce on my life, but I will win. Lord, I will not fail. By your grace, O oh God, I will not become a casualty. Holy Spirit, undertake for me today. Work in my life particularly. Thank you, Lord. When must I overcome? It must be now. Don't let my foundation be destroyed. Don't let the enemy destroy me at my foundation level. Don't let him create a wrong impression, a wrong definition for me. I want to be the man, the woman you have made me to be. Lord, help me. 
Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Are you struggling with something and the devil is saying, hey, wait, wait, wait. Tell the devil I cannot wait. The matter must be concluded today. When Paul came to make an announcement, he said, those of you that want to bury that matter here, let it not be buried in your hand, let it be buried out there, so that you can walk away in liberty, walk away in victory, walk away gloriously. Thank you. Thank you. Some of you, you are just at the edge of tumbling. Some of you, you tumbled over and over, but God is saying, I have not finished with you. I can correct it. I can uproot it. I can give you victory. As we stand in prayer, tell God, pass me not, O gentle Savior. You are my humble cry. While on others you are calling, Savior, do not pass me back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, because of the way God wants to deal with these issues, even this morning, let's respond to God. Let's say to God, I'm not ashamed to stand for you. I'm not ashamed to make it right. I have traveled this long. Some of you slept on the road. You can't go back with that struggle. Let's puncture it today. Let's finish it. These three areas of battle that is particularly focused on the young man, the craze for sex, the desire to always change and buy new, new things that has put you under pressure, that has made you to start collecting money where you should not, and sometimes in exchange for your body, this money you're saying, break it for me. Are you proud that will not allow you to humble yourself before God? Tell the Lord, this money, break it. Don't let me be a casualty. Thank you. I know there are people that the Spirit of God is speaking to. And He's speaking to you as a father. I say, my daughter, my son, give me a space. And I will organize you. I will help your life. I will forgive you. I will give you victory. Where are you this morning? You want to say, Lord, no longer will I struggle. I just want victory. I don't want my years to increase and I will just end a victim. Lord, help me today. Touch my life and give me a new beginning. Where are you? If you will raise your right hand to God and say, Here am I, Lord. Here am I, touch me. Here am I, change my story. Here am I, help me. Here am I, deliver me. Lord, you say, whosoever confesses, you are faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. And I ask you this moment, Lord, come and do this work for us. Come and do this work for us. We are, we are looking onto something that from this meeting, this young man, they will work out of here with a newness, with a victory that nobody can take from them. Do that for us, Father. Jesus, please come. 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 Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. With a broken heart, we call on you. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. To who else shall we go? To who else and where shall we go? Please come. Please come. Come this day. Do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we are praying. Amen. This has been Living Seed. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036365 0703 036365
768119 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Make it a date with us next week.